Today, we'll be talking on specific dynamic action of foods or the thermic effect of food. Let's have a brief look at the introduction. The third category of energy requirement to be taken into account in estimating total energy need is the energy needed to produce the thermic effect of food or the specific dynamic action of food. Food ingestion stimulates metabolism and requires energy to meet the multiple activities of digestion, absorption, metabolism, and storage of nutrients. Energy requirement is affected by the type of food ingested. The extra heat which is produced after taking food is known as the specific dynamic action. As a result of stimulation of metabolism, Increased heat production occurs from 1 to 3 hours after a meal as the result of the presence of food in stomach and intestine and the nutrients in the bloodstream. The increase in energy cost due to this thermogenesis amount about 10% of the total for basal metabolism and activity. Therefore, to estimate total energy needs, it is necessary to add an additional of 10%. Let's see what is thermic effect of food or the specific dynamic action of food. Rubner observed that carbohydrates, fats, and protein fed to a fasting dog stimulated the energy metabolism over the basal level to varying extents. He found that in a fasting requiring 400 kilocalories, feeding of 100 grams of carbohydrate produced 425 kilocalories, 44.4 grams of fat produced 416 kilocalories, and 100 grams of protein produced 520 kilocalories of heat. Therefore, the extra energy produced due to specific dynamic action of food for carbohydrate, fats, and protein is 25, 16, and 120 kilocalories, respectively. So, the specific dynamic action of protein is the highest, about 30%, while that of carbohydrates and fat, it is only 6% and 4%, respectively. The specific dynamic action of mixed diet containing 62.5 grams of carbohydrate, 10 grams of fats, and 10 grams of protein is about 8%. The extra heat produced is obtained by the oxidation of the tissue constituents and the animal will be negative energy balance. This stimulating effect of carbohydrates, fats, and protein on energy metabolism is called specific dynamic action or the thermic effect of food. We'll illustrate this with an example. An amount of protein which contains 100 kilocalories, which is equivalent to 25 grams, when metabolized in the body, the heat produced is not 100 kilocalories but 130 kilocalories. This extra 30 kilocalories is the product of the specific dynamic action of protein. Similarly, in the body, a 100 kilocalorie portion of fat produced 113 kilocalories and a 100 kilocalorie portion of carbohydrate produces 105 kilocalories. This extra heat is due to the activity of tissues metabolizing these foodstuffs. When these above foods are taken in a mixed diet, the specific dynamic action is not the total of the specific dynamic action of each foodstuff when fed separately. According to Forbes, when the glucose and protein are combined, the specific dynamic action is 12.5% less than the sum of their individual effects. The specific dynamic action is 22% less when fat, glucose, and protein are combined. The high specific dynamic action of protein can be reduced depending on the quantities of other foodstuffs in the diet. It has been found in Forbes data that 
Fate has much influence on specific dynamic action than does any other nutrients. That is, fate decreases the specific dynamic action more than any other nutrients. When different amino acids are fed, alanine, glycine, and phenylalanine are found to produce high specific dynamic action. So, according to Krebs, two main factors are responsible for the high production of STA of protein. First is the energy required for deamination of amino acids, which again is derived by the oxidation of other metabolites, and second is the energy required for the synthesis of urea, which is obtained by the oxidation of other metabolism. Now we'll see the types of thermic effect of foods. Thermic effect of food is of two types which are obligatory, that is, the energy cause of absorption, transport of nutrients, and synthesis and storage of carbohydrate, protein, and fats. And the other is facultative, which is the excess energy expanded above the obligatory thermogenesis. It is partially mediated by the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. Let's see the factors affecting the specific dynamic action of food. The thermic effect of food varies with the composition of the diet being greater after carbohydrate and protein consumption than after feed. This is attributable to the metabolic inefficiency of metabolizing carbohydrate and protein in comparison with fats. Feed is stored very efficiently with only 4% wastage compared with 25% wastage when carbohydrate is converted to feed or storage. These factors are thought to contribute to the obesity promoting characteristics of feed. Thermogenic food promote fat breakdowns without affecting the lean muscle mass by increasing the vessel metabolic rate. They help in maintaining negative energy balance in the body. The following foods are considered thermogenic foods, which are L-carnitine, which occurs in meat and dairy products, methionine, which helps in the synthesis of L-carnitine, conjugated linoleic acid, which is in beef and dairy products, L-tyrosine, which is an appetite suppressant, caffeine, chromium, which improves carbohydrate and lipid metabolism, and lecithin, which is a lipotropic factor. Spicy foods both enhance and prolong the effect of thermic effect of food. Meals with added chili, cinnamon, ginger, garlic, and mussel increases the metabolic rate significantly more than the unspiced meal. This effect may be prolonged for more than three hours. Caffeine and nicotine also stimulate the thermic effect of food. The amount of caffeine in one cup of coffee if ingested every two hours for 12 hours has been shown to increase the thermic effect of food by 8 to 11 percent. Nicotine has a similar effect. Green tea, fatty fish, soya and whey proteins and milk are thermogenic foods. Now let's see what is thermogenesis. The phenomenon of thermogenesis or the waste heat is influenced by many factors. Some of these are not directly associated with food intake and for this region the term thermogenic response is used instead of specific dynamic action. For example, the compound Dinitrophenol uncouples oxidative phosphorylation and increases heat production. Thyroxin affects mitochondrial function and also increases heat production. Epinephrine and no epinephrine increases heat production but by a different mechanism. On the other hand, thermogenesis is increased by nutrient deficiencies. Changing pathway of metabolism alters thermogenesis. Increasing the plane of nutrition factor also affects the magnitude of thermogenic phenomenon. An interesting model for the control of thermogenesis is proposed by Strelling and Stock. This involves the availability of alpha glycerophosphate as the regulating factor in the subtle of fatty acids between the free form and triglycerides in the adipocyte. 
they point out that when alpha glycerophosphate levels are low due to lack of carbohydrate precursor or due to elevated alpha glycerophosphate oxidase fatty acid oxidation is increased and esterification is decreased this result in an increased thermogenesis due to the fact that the step catalyzed by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase has a low efficiency of ATP formation. Furthermore, fatty acids are well-known uncouplers of oxidative phosphorylation and due to partial loss in respiratory control, there is a tendency towards an increased rate of oxidation. On the other hand, Bohl calculated that if adequate glucose or glycogen is present to furnish a glycerophosphate for adipose tissue, cyclic lipolysis and subsequent re-esterification can proceed with heat loss amounting to as much as 15% of the animal's resting metabolism. Thus, from these studies, it is evident that thermogenesis can vary in amount depending upon metabolic pathways involved and in turn by the availability of certain substrates which ultimately depends upon the nutrients ingested and the nutrients of the individual. Now, let's see the mechanism of specific dynamic action of food. The explanation regarding the exact mechanism for specific dynamic action of food is not clear. However, it is believed to be associated with the energy required for digestion, absorption, transport, metabolism, and storage of foods in the body. Intravenous administration of amino acids or the oral ingestion of proteins give the same specific dynamic action. This shows that the specific dynamic action of protein is not due to their digestion and absorption. Hepatectomy, that is, removal of liver, abolishes specific dynamic action, thereby indicating that Specific dynamic action is closely connected with the metabolic function of liver. The specific dynamic action of protein is primarily to meet the energy requirements for deamination, synthesis of urea, biosynthesis of proteins, and synthesis of triglycerol from carbon skeleton to amino acid. And synthesis of triglycerol from carbon skeleton of amino acids. It has been demonstrated that certain amino acids like phenylalanine, glycine, and alanine increases the specific dynamic action. It is a common experience that consumption of a protein-rich diet makes us feel warm and comfortable in cold weather. This is due to the high specific dynamic action of proteins. When the individual is exposed to a cold environment, the specific dynamic effect of food simply provide parts of the heat required to maintain thermal balance and heat produced following ingestion of food in a cold environment is not as pronounced as observed in a warm ambient temperature. Similarly, heat produced following protein ingestion is diminished in fertile, infected patients as hypermetabolic injured individuals. The specific dynamic action of carbohydrate is attributed to the energy expenditure for the conversion of glucose to glycogen. As regards fate, the specific dynamic action may be due to its storage, mobilization, and oxidation. Now, I will conclude by saying that specific dynamic action of food represents the effort or energy that the body has to use to break down the food until it is reduced to its basic unit, which is the only form in which it can enter the bloodstream. How much work this involves depends on the food consistency and its molecular structure. For the utilization of foods by the body, certain amount of energy is consumed from the body store. This is actually expenditure by the body for the utilization of foodstuffs. The specific dynamic action of protein is the highest with 30% while that of carbohydrate is 6% and fats is 4% and for a mixed diet it is about 8%. The higher 
specific dynamic action for protein indicate that it is not a good source of energy. Feed is a base source of energy due to its lowering effect on specific dynamic action. It is therefore essential that an additional 10% calories should be added to the total energy needs of the body towards specific dynamic action and the diet should be planned accordingly.